When I think of what you're asking me, where my work comes from, I have to consider memory. So I can remember the tanks being outside. I can remember the, the National Guard. But at the same time, that was the birth of when this action figure named G.I. Joe, you know, so I'm seeing G.I. Joe on television, then I look outside my window and I see a real G.I. Joe. Boom, boom! G.I. Joe, take down! There, there! Horrific battle! So, the color green and, and camouflaged. I don't think of Vietnam and all that, I think of G.I. Joe. So when I hear people talk about the Newark Uprising and things of this nature, I don't know that people died in that. I think of tank, I think of military, I think of a present. My memory bank. I can't work when I'm angry. I can't work when I'm sad. I, you, you know, you used to hear that, oh, you know, artists work best when he's frustrated. I work best when I'm going to say something now, you know? Sometimes things come through research. Some things is just innate, I just, go with the gut, and I look at my materials, I look at time, you know, so it's like when you ask the question of you know, how long I've been making art or how art happens for me. It's, it's, it's a multi-layered thing because when you start talking about art as a life, art as culture, art as a practice, you better get into the shit because you need to make it for you, you know? And if you strike and the stars align themselves and people um, support it and buy it, then that's one thing. But if you chasing, you know, the frog soup you can drink to your fucking ribbon, you could wear Bluetooth to rotten tooths to being a toothless hooker. You better have a gimmick or some shit to keep you active in it, because other than that, it's a lot of letdowns, and you better enjoy your magic while you about to kind of create it. So that, for me, is what all this is, is just allow me just to be who and what keeps me going in my head. This, then, is stereophonic sound. Sound sculptured in space. I'm from Newark, 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 New Jersey. This is Newark, a miracle city, a city of tall buildings, narrow dark streets, magnificent parks, broad avenues, homes and schools, stores and theaters. A fascinating city, the brick city. Actually, not too far from where we're sitting is the first recollection of me memorizing an environment which is on High Street, in West Kinney, going to preschool, which was at Quitman Street School. I remember watching a teacher take a piece of construction paper, fold it in half, and fold it another, and fold it, and then taking crayons and coloring almost like a checkerboard. Seeing all the other little kids, you know, being disruptive and, and doing all these things, and I choose the color, you know. I saw it as an art not just 
play. Because play was what the other students were doing over there with the blocks and all this other stuff. I'm here at the desk, you know, um, drawing, doing something that required, you know, discipline. To throw around the ball and just, <laughs> I'm like, you know, where's the yellow? <laughs> I need some more black. What's that over there, you know? And I was okay with doing that. The studious little cat. You know what I mean? Come to love discovery as well as sharing information with people in that ah moment you know I love that taking someone somewhere and showing him and her you know these other layers of what surrounds us that we overlook People will just assume if they saw a mobile that, you know, Alexander Calder, Alexander Calder, and he was one of the first um, contemporary artists to uh, deal with star bills and mobiles. But that whole mo notion of movement and air, things floating in the air, and moving. That was around hundreds of years, if not thousands of years prior to him. And yet, I don't want to just necessarily deal with the past. I also want to bring it into the future, present day. You know, so my forms are very present, indigenous to this land to this moment. So hence the radios, the guns, music, the forms, you know, that to me is what's relevant. This is my living hero, David Hammond's the book, Rousing the Roots. I'm not going to give away too much, but anytime you pick up a book and you see chicken wings on the cover, I'm like, okay, you know that what lies in between this tree being cut down is some information on, when you're talking about stacking paper, this is stacking paper. Come on, who else collected chicken butt? Shopping bags with chicken grease in it and other kinds of neck bone grease and made a sculpture using hair and chicken grease. Come on, come on, load it. And this is one of his most, one of the pieces that came in called Higher Aim, where he took one, two, three, four, five, like six telephone poles and put a basketball court of hoop, you know, to speak on. This is what it's going to take. You making that basket, or you put an MC up there, or a mic up there, to rise to the top of the pile. That's what you got to aim for. You know, you didn't know what you up against or what competition looked like. There you go, 15 stories high. So that's like your MPC is up there, you know? Your camera is up there. Your mind must be there. Brenda Lynn Robinson, Symphonic Poems. It takes 15 years, 20 years, some works for her, it took, you know, it's ongoing. So she keep adding, adding, adding. And this is her right here. You know, this is what keeps me going, man. And you gotta ask, also acknowledge Glenn Lydon knew this whole self-taught world. So you got this. You should always 
inspire or just share some of the information for those who don't know. And that don't always mean that um, they don't know about it. They just may not know of that one particular, a few particular things that you're showing them. So never think that you're the know-it-all. Please. And we out. Home was a household of seven. I was just Jerry. I was never made to feel that I was inferior or any of that kind of stuff. I was made to feel, you know, um, that I mattered. If I wanted to color, go in my room and color like I did in school, that was okay. My grandmother lived on the third floor. They were devout Christians, so, you know, you go upstairs on the third floor, you either the work of the devil or you're doing God's work. It was the Caucasian picture of Jesus on the wall. You know, it was no foolishness. Outside of that, it was just a typical household, so there was no kind of, you know, self-expression. If I were to say what resonated would be music. There was a radio that always would play music. I remember the Marvin Gaye songs. I remember the Afro Sheen, you know, Ebony Magazine. Drawing the peace symbols, because this was from the hippies era, so you still had the symbolism of peace signs everywhere. So you got all of these little signifiers that's a part of what's in my consciousness. It was never asked of me from an outside source to pull from that richness and to put it into an artistic form. When it happened was when I was exposed or discovered, if you will, ever saw art, which some people call graffiti. Graffiti, as the name itself, is not an art. Graffiti is the application of a medium to a surface. I will show you graffiti, such as the letters on the end of that car directly in back of me. Is that an art form? I don't know. I'm not an art criminal critic, but I can sure as hell tell you that that's a crime. I can remember on the wall seeing, you know, he's writing, and my brother Kevin was one day you know, drawing in the book. I'm seeing him write, I'm like, yo, what is this? He's like, yo, this is graffiti, you know what I mean? And then from there, he wrote the alphabet and I was going home practicing. And I remember, you know, one time, you know, going to New York and I saw someone on the train and said nasty. And at the time, I'm in the second phase of street learning the coolness because this was the period when where um, everybody has a nickname but now everyone has the Muslim name. So my name was Nasir, you know, and for short people call me Nas. So I became too nasty Nas. And that was my handle. You know, when you first start out, you're just a toy boy, so you haven't perfected that hand style, that comes years later. I was hungry to learn, what is this? Looking to copy how to do the E's and you know how to do bubble letters. Then I started going to New York by myself and would go to like 42nd Street or Chamber Street and just sit and watch the trains go by for hours at a time in this drawer. So if you will, I 
immerse myself into like a self-taught school of this New York cultural things. So this is kind of like a, 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 a isolated journeyman type of thing, you know, that I was on. And I guess that's probably going to be the story of my life. It just made me come into that, you know. Um, on one hand, it, 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 it makes me want to cry, you know, because when you think of isolation and some of the things that you are experiencing that has a deeper connection to you and you like by yourself you wish that sometimes someone was there to share in that magic because that's like I will, that bond and then after discovering it you become a practitioner of it it's great when you could bounce that off of somebody and a lot of times we get lost in translation because you really don't have anyone to bounce it on which creates this kind of insular world normally work in quiet spaces. I believe that uh, in silence, the nuances of sound and the meditative quality of what you do resonate. And I had to learn in my later years that the gift of what my life is starts with being alone and becoming gracefully aware of that space. That was profound to me because for a long time, you know, as being a quote-unquote artist, we think that we got to be driven by all these stimuli that I got to have the be at the parties, I have to be at the happenings, I have to be, you know, on this list, I have to be speaking here, I have to be, and no, being alone, you know, alone, but not lonely, because my daughter believes that her father is this big, lonely guy, and she have no idea that alone is where you become a part of who and what you are. And until you or Jerry got into that space and place, I couldn't come down here and graciously create all of these things. This wasn't with the crew. This wasn't with a posse. This wasn't with any of that. I mean, poetically, I can always say the ancestors and those are part of it. But Jerry Gant, as we're speaking into this camera in this day, I live alone. And... I've learned that in living alone, I've been able to understand the grace and the magic that I can possess within a silent, quiet space with just me in it. You are now listening to the third installment of Back Where the Motherfucking Pain Is. Just as much as I am joyous and bubbly and filled with laughter, there's a lot of darkness and emptiness and, and yearning. And I'm going to be honest, this stuff had me commit an act of suicide. I tried, I attempted to kill myself. You know what I mean? Um, well, maybe you don't know what I mean. This is what I mean. That sadness and failure the only thing that was logical at the time 
was to leave this place. Because the stuff that I thought was all right, and the things that I thought had meaning, and the art that I thought was beautiful, and the songs that I thought was going to resurrect me, all vanish and meant nothing and I was just surrounded and compounded with the walls of just ugliness. That period when things weren't um, as expected, I would say it was the end of the 80s, kind of 88 to 92. Basquiat had died, Willie Smith had died, Patrick Kelly had died. Um, those were my heroes, you know what I mean? These were like men who had broke free out of the traditional profession. You know, Basquiat was an artist, Willie Smith was a fashion designer. AIDS had ripped through the community. Now this was the next generation was the automatic cats with the Uzis and then my drug habit kicked in so it was you know volcanic and it had all erupted and so my art my heart my friends my family my thoughts and all the things that i thought was going to catapult me out of this place seemed like it was a vacuum killing and it was a weight of like uh, an anvil the only thing I thought in that dark space being broken in that corner was that I want out of here, you know what I mean? And the only thing, the conclusion was death. So I got my hands on some Tylenols in the house and I popped like 17 of them, you know? And I laid on the couch and it was like, I got dressed up in what I thought was a, a, a good corpse, how I want to be found. And as crazy as that sound, after taking all the pills, I'm laying on the couch, and about like 15 minutes later, my stomach started bubbling. And when I got up and I ran in the bathroom and I threw up, and for that first time, I broke down and I cried like a broken baby, you know? I was broken. And that's what did it. That's what did it, crying. Because the weight of everything had lifted. And it was through that period when the whole notion of detox the ghetto became a reality for me because it started with me wanting to detox the ghetto. We're right here at Martin Luther King and Clinton Avenue, so it's a very historical point where we're at. But the building that we're in is the St. Luke's Church, and I'm part of the Senior Citizens um, Workshop, which is from Art Moves in conjunction with uh, Rutgers University and the Paul Robeson Art Gallery. This, working with this population, I love it because this is the understanding group, you know? This is the wisdom group. I don't have to be apologetic about if I don't know something. One of the things I learned is that if they're not in the mood of feel like creating anything, they'll just simply tell you, yo, look, come back later, it's too hot, it's too cold. But once they get open and the creative magic, some of the most profound stories, some of the most beautiful antidote, some of the best wording, all that good stuff had happened right in this process here. Because normally when we are in a society, unless there's a formal introduction, there's a major disconnect between my generation and that generation, the young and the old. So there isn't few places, like unless you're a part of your grandmother's everyday interaction, but there isn't any major you know, social interaction where, you know, there was laughter, there was um, curiosity, there was, you know, creative exchange, there was all these compounded layers. That to me is what this thing has allowed me to, you know, take um, what I'd known, what I learned as an artist, which is 
still that human dynamic connected to that. And then bringing it to a community of people who their outlet probably isn't creative in the sense of form making or, sh or creating objects. And so to make that transition or for y'all to see how it unravels and unfolds, I mean, it's priceless. It's what keeps me sharp. Mm -hmm. So we 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 in, we talking about things that is real yeah. in people's life, yeah. you know. Real stress is for real. Yeah. Letdowns yeah. is real. Yeah. Anger is real, and I wish yeah. we stopped denying yeah. ourselves from saying we're not angry when we are. Yeah. This is what art does. It allows us to to express, to express it instead of repressing it or see or suppressing yeah. it. Sure that drives up blood. Pressure and lupus and create all kinds of gallstones and this is my stress relief. This is really it really helps. I know it does. It really really helps. It does. You just don't understand what was on my mind when I first came in here. People don't know that play. Oh my goodness. Play reduces. Our stress, our anger, it challenges our ugliness. You know, people don't know it. And we think by being mean and trying to figure everything out, it's healthy. It's not. Yes. This is what it's about. It helps. It helps loosen it. You know? We talked together was um, the rebirth period. So, I know that when I used to write Detox the Ghetto, it was for me. Those were my, what I call my concrete tattoos. It was something that I needed to say to myself as a mantra, like Detox the Ghetto. In order for the ghetto to detox, Jerry, you got to detox on yourself, son. You can't keep doing this, and you, you know, you can't keep, you know, saying you want to live and yet you partaking and, and participating in death. And you don't want to die because there's so much more you want to experience. And you got to do it now. And you can't do it if you keep molecule shifting. If you keep swallowing your own blood and it's not nourishment. You know, you keep running with cowards when you know you got courage. It's almost like the Wizard of Oz story. What I'm thinking I'm lacking, I got. The trap that lays open and ready and exterminate on site has been around for hundreds of years and will be around a hundred more years. And unfortunately and fortunately, those things create liberators or exterminators. And somewhere along the line, you become aware that there's choices. These mean streets taught me that family starts with the act of giving to humanity. But what I do now is what I consider the most important time. And when I think about legacy, culturally, by me having a park that I've done or contributed to, I made a major impact to the city that I call home. A legacy has been fulfilled. This, what's in front of you today, is a person who have taken my cuts and my scars and put them in a form that transcend this time. So I know that we don't die, we only multiply. You know, and, and that multiplication is 
where the magic is. So right now, I'm a magician. Space Bar 3. Yeah. Yo. This is a pain and fame production. Uh. And I'm Mellow Mel. Do it yourself, kid. Uh. DIY. Catch me in the crowd. Trying to start a party to my people's in the back. Yo, don't hurt nobody. To my people's in the front row. Put your cameras down. Take a little time to enjoy the sounds of pain and fame. We lead them kick drums on the brain. Major in psychoacoustic chilling while you drink a brew to it. I want to see you nod your head like you in the Buick. I bet you want to know how I do it. Just call me the jack of all trades. Some rappers wouldn't make a